This new design space tool is an absolute game changer. I am already obsessed and I'm sure you will be too because making stickers just became a one click process. Once you are on the canvas in Design Space, you will see that in the top menu there is a new button called Create Sticker. At the moment, we can't click on it because our canvas is blank. So let's just add a simple shape, star for example, and now you can see it's come to life. So if you click into it, we can start designing the sticker. The cool thing about these stickers is that you're not just limited to shapes, you can combine images, shapes, text, all those different things and create your own really custom sticker. So let's say for example, I have finally decided to get back on with that scrapbook that I started for my daughter when she was born and haven't touched in eight years. For some reason, back then, I decided that it was a great idea to catalogue her life month by month. Why don't we design a sticker for my January page dedicated to my daughter? The first step of this process is I will show you how I personally use images and text to put together a design. If that's not something that you need help with, you just want to know exactly how the tool works, then skip ahead to this timestamp. But otherwise, let's go into images. So I'm gonna search flowers and find something that I like the look of. One thing I will say is that since Cricut has opened up design space to contributing artists, which is an amazing thing that they've done because it means so many people are able to share their artwork in design space and it means so many different people, different cultures are being represented now. It does also mean that the library of images is growing exponentially and pretty much every time you search for something, by the next day when you search, your results are going to be completely different because there's a whole bunch of new images. What I would say is anytime you find an image you like the look of, hit bookmark on it straight away. You can see that as a little kind of icon at the bottom right of the image because guarantee you, next time you search, you won't find it again if you haven't bookmarked it. You'll be able to find the images you have bookmarked using the filter menu on the left hand side just click on bookmark I quite like the look of this one so if I click it then it will appear at the bottom of the screen and I can add it to canvas now the vision that I've got for my sticker is that I'll have one of these flowers on either side and January written in the middle these will kind of form a sort of a frame but the problem is at the moment these two flowers are stuck together and if I look in the layers panel I can't actually separate them because you can see the layers are made of the stems, the flowers, and then the inside bit of the flower. So the only way that I'll be able to do this is if I use a tool called Contour. So if I click on just the image and I'm on that top layer, you can see I can't contour because we're not on the level of the individual layers. If, however, I click on the layer for the stems, for example, I can now hit contour and let's turn off the bottom stem come out you'll see that that stem has disappeared so now I want to get rid of the flowers at the bottom so let's click on the flowers layer contour again turn off these flowers and now we just need to get rid of this inside part of the flowers again contour and just by clicking on these shapes you turn them off there we go we've got one flower perfect what I'm gonna do is duplicate this because like I said, I wanted them on either side and then I will flip this one horizontal so that it faces the other way. Now I'll probably add some rotation once I've added the text as well. Great, that is looking really good. Let's now add our text. Click on text in the left hand menu and then we were doing January. Now of course, I mean this is fine but I don't really love this font. So I'm going to click into the fonts menu and one important filter I'm going to put on is that I want a kerned font, which means that the letters will join together nicely, especially if we're using something like a cursive font, where it should look like handwriting. And in fact, I'm going to filter for cursive, because I want that kind of look for this. The other thing that I do like to do when deciding fonts is that I will actually just scroll down to the bottom and start searching around there because I find that otherwise we're all using the same fonts because no one ever scrolls down to the bottom. That is actually why Cricut put all of these different filters in to help us access more of their fonts because there are so many in here. I like the look of this font here and I will bookmark it because I want to keep it safe for next time I might be wanting to use it. So let's make the word a bit bigger. I might change the color of January to one that fits with the stickers. And then as I mentioned, I kind of, I want these to sort of be a bit more framing around January. In fact, I might flip this once again, this way. Move it down like this. 
The next thing I think will be nice to kind of bring the whole image together is to add a sort of background to this. So if we go back into images and then search for something like paint splatter or splodge, we'll find something. This is the kind of thing I mean, but I don't want something too cartoonish looking and it needs to be sort of long and wide rather than circular like these. So that's an option, I'll add that to my canvas. And let's see if there's anything, and this one. Let's add these both, have a look at how they look. So, they're definitely big enough. So if I arrange and centre back, I quite like that, make that a bit smaller. And let's see what the other one looks like. Oh no, I like this one better, so I'm gonna delete this. I want to change the colour, because remember, we're making a sticker, so the colours do actually matter for our design. So one tip I have for you is when you are trying to think of colours that go together, one thing you can do is, let's say if we click on the colour swatch and you can see that there are the colours already in our design at the top. If I select, let's say, the blue colour and then down here I slide this along, then I'll get colours that will be in the same colour space as the, the one that we initially chose. So there'll be colours that complement each other. So you can see that actually looks quite sweet. I might try and go for a bolder colour. Gorgeous, okay, this is looking great. So we're happy with how our sticker is looking, so we are ready to create the sticker. And the good thing is that if you are someone who's previously tried to make stickers, you'll know there's a bunch of steps you'd normally have to follow now. But with the new tool, it's all done in one click. Let's highlight our design. Leave it all as individual layers, nothing to do. One thing I would suggest is do a quick copy and paste to keep a spare copy. First thing you can see is that it's giving you the option of making a die cut or a kiss cut. Now, if you've worked with a vinyl before on your machines, you'll be familiar with what a kiss cut is. What this will do is it will only cut through the top layer of your sticker paper and leave the lining intact. And this is how you might want to cut if you want to create a sheet of stickers that you're maybe you're going to sell or you're putting into a party bag. We can compare that to a die cut sticker where it will cut the whole way through your sticker paper, including the lining. So you will still get stickers, but they will be individual. They won't be on one sheet altogether. So I will demonstrate both, but let's start with a die cut. So if I click on this button, you can see actually in the background already our sticker is basically ready. So if I click on apply, and that is an important step, always press apply, otherwise the tool just doesn't work. And you can see we've got stickers. So if we zoom in a bit, I can show you that all of those places where the images were overlapping are no longer cut lines. You can see it says it's become a print and cut and it's going to cut around the outlines of our shape like this. That is super cool. And was a one-click process, right? In the case of this flower, I wouldn't recommend cutting like this because you can see we've got some pretty fiddly, intricate pieces. For example, where the stem of the flower is. A nicer way of cutting this sticker would be to add a border. And again, this is something that the tool allows you to do. So you can click on Edit Sticker, and then you'll see here that there is an option of adding a border. You can select from three preset uh, widths, or you can even go into Custom and decide exactly how much you want yourself. I quite like standard, that's what I've been using a lot. And the other cool thing is you can set your own colour. It doesn't have to just be white, for example. So let's make it black so you can really see how, it, how this looks. Hit apply. And there we go, now we've got our sticker and it has a really gorgeous offset background. Now in the case of this one, I don't really actually want it to have a black border, I want it to be white. But that's not a problem, you just click again on edit sticker. I can change it to white and then hit apply. You may have noticed while we were working with the tool that there is this other option here called cut interior shapes. So to show you what this means, I'm going to actually get, grab a different shape because it's easier demonstrated with a different sort of a shape. So let's take something like this one a bit bigger and let's just change the color to make it look pretty why not so let's create a stick out of this again die cut and let's put a thin border on it and now let's select cut interior shapes and apply and you can see what it means is any negative spaces inside your image can also be cut out so if we edit and turn this bit off you'll see now it won't cut this interior triangle the whole thing will just be one sticker but when we turn it on then you can see there would be a cut here. And I think that's actually quite a cool effect. One thing that you should be aware of is sometimes the option is not available. And that confused me until I realized that the reason that's happening is because you've added an offset border. 
and the offset border is wider than that negative space inside your image. So if you look here and I've added a wide border, then if it's adding the same offset on the inside, that ends up all overlapping and there's no negative space left inside the image. If I go back to that being a thin border, you can see because the border is not as wide, now you can still add a border, like an offset border to your negative shape and still have space inside of it to actually cut. So don't get confused if that happens to you. Let me explain the kiss cut option. So as we mentioned earlier, this will allow you to create a sheet of stickers. Let's click into create sticker and kiss cut. And then it looks pretty similar as before. You can add a border. So I'll go with a standard border. Again, you can set the color. We'll keep it as white. Cut interior shapes is as I explained to you guys before. Um, and I will explain this die cut edge, but let's first just see how our sticker is currently looking. So you can see that there is a subtle difference in the color of the outline. So here it's quite obviously a black outline, whereas here it's a bit more gray, which is indicating to us that this is a kiss cut and this is a die cut. Now let's go back into edit sticker and add a die cut edge and hit apply. Now you can see we've got the interior kiss cut. So that will cut through the sticker paper, not the liner. But now it's added around it, a die cut line, which will cut through the entire sticker and the liner. So you'll end up with individual stickers, just like with the die cut. But the difference is that you will now have like an edging of liner that you can use to make it easier to peel the sticker. I think this is actually a really fantastic option. Uh, the reason that you might not want to use it and stick with a full die cut is that obviously adding this uses up more space on your sticker paper so you can print fewer stickers on each sheet of sticker paper. But if it's not a problem, then I would definitely add this. Now you know how to use the tool, let's actually go ahead and print and cut a sheet of stickers. I'm going to open up the project that I mentioned I have saved for you guys on my profile. What I've done is prepared the project as I mentioned in three different ways. You've got the option to cut a sheet of stickers using the kiss cut or individual stickers using the die cut or the individual stickers with the additional border of lining around it. Obviously, if you are making this project, just delete these titles because you don't want to cut those and delete whichever one of these projects you're not making. I'm going to demonstrate the kiss cut plus die cut, but all three are basically the same process. So to start, I will get rid of the bits we don't need. I've also sized these projects to fit on an A4 sheet of paper. I am going to be printing these stickers on my Canon Pixma printer. It's a really great one for crafters. If you want to know more about it, then I have a whole video on the channel that you can go and check out. One thing you should know is that you do need to use an inkjet printer. And I will be printing on official Cricut sticker paper um, because that's what they recommend works best. But um, have a play around. I'm sure non-brand will work as well. Let's select make it. Okay, and one thing I need to make sure is that my paper is set to the right size, so I can see that's A4, so that's perfect. So we can hit continue. Let's send our image to printer. First thing you should do is turn off the bleed, and I always like to use the system dialog, and then I'll select print. Sometimes this screen appears behind your Cricut Design Space screen, so if you're not seeing this screen, then just minimize Design Space, and you should find it on your desktop somewhere. So yes, I'm using my Canon printer and paper size. Now, I want it to make sure that it selects from the rear tray. I'm going to tell it I'm using photo paper and I want um, quality to be best. I've tested these settings and it, it works well for these stickers. So let's load up the printer. So I'm using the quite old school Cricut Explore printable sticker paper. So I will put that into the back rear tray of my printer. Okay. And then the printer is asking me to confirm that the settings of my paper, so A4 matte is perfect. And I'm happy to go ahead and print. Honestly, the print quality on this printer is so gorgeous. I love this. But let's now set our base material. So we are using Printable sticker paper, not with a green lining. We need one with a, this one. Printable sticker paper, white, gray liner printing. You can see the back is sort of white, whitish gray. We have the option of changing the cut pressure for the kiss cut and the die cut, but I'm gonna leave them as default. So let's get our mat loaded up. Now do make sure that when you place your sticker paper onto your card mat, 
You place it as it was on the Make It screen. You can see here, it's in the top left. Okay, and then I like to use the brayer tool to get a good bond between the, between the paper and the mat. And we, I've already loaded the fine point blade, but it's always good to give it a quick check to make sure that the um, blade is clean. Obviously, be careful when you do that. Okay, let's load up our mat. And now we can press go. Time to unload. And then what I always do is place my mat upside down on its liner. Peel it away backwards like this so that you don't end up bending up all these beautiful stickers. There we go. Let's put the mat away. Always cover up your mat straight away, guys. Keep them nice and clean as much as possible. Helps prolong the life. And here are our stickers. How great is this tool? Let me know if you use it. Tag me on Instagram at Rabia Khans. And before you go, check out this playlist of my most wanted craft tutorials. I'm sure you will love them. I'm gonna get back to making more stickers now. I will see you next time. Till then, happy crafting.